Hi everyone, it's David from Edge Impulse back once again, and today we're going to take a closer look at our new NVIDIA Jetson Orin Nano Super Developer Kit. Let's go! In our previous video, we did an unboxing and went over the various ports and configuration that make this Jetson Orin Nano a Super Developer Kit. And over on the right hand side, I've got the previous version of the Jetson Nano, and today we'll do a comparison to see how this one performs versus the new Super. Now before we get too far along in our investigation here, we need to keep in mind that Edge Impulse is focused on building Edge AI, or what used to be called or known as TinyML models. And these models can run on small devices, even down into the MCU range. So I don't know exactly how much more performance we're gonna be able to get from a Jetson Orin Nano versus the Jetson Orin Nano Super Developer Kit, but we'll find out. The first thing we've done is taken this USB webcam, hooked it up to the original Jetson Orin Nano Developer Kit, and we'll go ahead and launch the Edge Impulse Runner to begin inferencing. I've already built a model which detects this valve. Once the model is started, we can get the conveyor going, and sure enough, the valve's detected as it moves along on the conveyor belt. If we zoom in on that and launch the runner one more time, we can see the model gets loaded onto the GPU. Our camera stream will begin, and back in the CLI we get as a result, the inference time and the location of the bounding box as well as the confidence score of the prediction. And I can go ahead and stop this. I can copy and paste these results, which I've actually already done on a previous run right here. And we can take a look at the average inference time that we received. Over in column B, that was our number in milliseconds. And I've already come over here to column K and dropped in a quick formula to determine the average, which we see is 8.462 milliseconds. So there is our baseline for a Jetson Orin Nano developer kit running this model. Now let's find out what happens when we take the same model and go place it onto our super. With the board powered off, we can go ahead and disconnect everything. get it out of the way, bring in the super, reconnect, and power on. Okay, I'm logged in now to the Orin Nano Super, and the very first thing I see is up here at the top right, this new power profile, Max N. Now on the previous Orin Nano developer kit, we only had a 15 watt mode and a seven watt mode available. But here on the Super, we have one called Max N that unlocks the higher performance, the higher clock rates on the device. Let's go ahead and launch our inference, just like we did on the previous attempt. Let that load onto the GPU and I can see inferences occurring once again. As I'm glancing at the output on the console, the numbers do look a little bit lower. So let's go ahead and stop this. And in a previous run, I did the exact same exercise of dropping those results into a sheet and running an average to see what kind of speed I'm getting. And sure enough, I've got 6.59 milliseconds now per inference. If you rewind the video and go back and see the previous Orin Nano, we got 8.46. So right away, I'm dropping about two, just under two milliseconds off of my inference time. Now that doesn't sound like a whole lot, but sure enough, 6.59 out of 8.46 is roughly, give or take, 25% increase. So, well, or I guess in this case, decrease. So that's a pretty sizable improvement when switching over 
to the Orin Nano Super. So there you have it. I did end up doing the math and we came out at 23.8% improvement. Not bad for simply upgrading the firmware on your Jetson Orin Nano developer kit to the Jetson Orin Nano Super developer kit. Now, NVIDIA does say that you can get up to 70%, 1.7x performance improvement, depending on your workload. Here at Edge Impulse, our models are already highly optimized, but still, 23.8% is pretty good for free. That's it for us for today. Have a good one, and we'll see you in the next video.